aha moments for me was, uh, there's an example that we talked about. Um, Bob gives an example of how the team got from you, you, you being pointed at making some mistakes or making some errors and non meeting metrics. And at some level, the team got to the point where they were hitting the metrics successfully and it all of a sudden became a we. Okay, so it's kind of like, how do you get from the you to the we bus? But to me, that was a aha moment. I'm going to get one for my desk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, I had a couple aha moments. You know, flattening the walls between groups and organization, I think, is real important. So, and eliminating any like base issues that might have happened in the past that could cause communication issues going forward. Um, that's something that's happened in my company. So. Uh, you know, trying to figure that out before you get into a major project and, and have to get through it. Um, but, and also just, you know, keeping communication positive and not being uh, accusatory and, and, you know, tr keeping the dialogue open and keeping it uplifting. I think it's played on some other breakout groups as well was, was kind of uh, things that clicked in for me. <laughs> Good. Good. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, we had a smaller group, which was which was kind of intimate. We called ourselves the cool kids. Yeah, yeah. But what was fun was that you know uh, we would start with with uh, Patricia's um, situation. She started mm -hmm. us with a scenario, but it, what it turned out was the story dialogue was a kind of brainstorming, uh, an ad hoc brainstorming by story. So as she started shared her story. It sparked something of me, and I share a story, and that got us to the wee bus. And then Joe shared something, and that sparked something else from an experience we had. And, and so we were sharing things that actually worked with each other, as opposed to brainstorming with a bunch of stickies and then deciding which ones you know, evaluating later. It wasn't evaluating, it was brainstorming, but it was like a positive storytelling brainstorm. It was very fluid. We, it just kind of kept moving. Everybody would jump in and, and come in with that story. That story is so important. And PJ knows, I, I, I bang on that all the time at work. We need the user stories, we need the user stories. And this kind of really clicked it in for me too, that how important they are. Well, I take it back to it is like the brainstorming on steroids. <laughs> okay, it's, it, it's, it's just not a brainstorming idea. You're sitting there putting context to the idea, and you're explaining it, and that's what was the good part of it, because there was just a little more depth to it. And I think one other thing that I thought was a, was interesting is that being in a circle mm -hmm. is a key for that. And that because it flowed so much better that we could take turns and we talk and we could see each other that if we were sitting there at a table or at a conference table, there's an automatic way, you know, you heard me talk to hierarchy and things like that. But being in a circle was able everybody was able to share much easier. I think the other key things that I learned was um when Patricia told her story, sort of focusing on trying to fix the problem, we kind of said, All right, here's my story and Here's what I add to the story, right? And this is what we did differently, um, and kind of build upon that, right? And, and each story, as we <clears throat> went along the circle, was kind of building on. Uh, and that, that made me think about, okay, well, how could I use that with me? And, and yeah, it really, we got our creative juices flowing. <laughs>